Do you want to learn how to make a content calendar that'll help you create and post content consistently? If you answered yes, you're in the right place. Welcome to my content calendar tutorial where I'm going to show you how to set up your own streamlined content workflow using Airtable. First, I'll walk you through real examples of how I use it to plan, organize, and track content across multiple platforms. Then I'll help you build your own from scratch, even if you've never used Airtable before. So before I get into the tutorial, I just quickly want to mention why you absolutely need a content calendar if you want to post consistently and start growing on social media. Before Airtable, I was totally unorganized. I was all over the place posting sporadically. I tried Notion, but found it too complicated. I tried Google Sheets and we used that for a while in our agency and it was just too much manual labor and just too messy. But when I found Airtable, that's when I was finally able to be consistent. I posted for a hundred days straight and finally started to see some growth on social media. Not to mention it's simple, it's visual for all those visual people out there. It's super easy and streamlined if you want to collaborate with video editors or clients. And what I'm about to show you is the same system that we implemented into our agency and our clients just rave about it. And if you want to save some time and purchase this template, I'll link it below. Let's get started. Alrighty, so here we are in our Airtable content calendar template and I'm going to take you through the main features here that you're going to want to get familiar with. So this is what we call an Airtable base. This is where you name it. And this is essentially your content calendar. Right now, we're in the grid view and there are other views that you can use depending on your personal preference. The grid view is the best for actually filling out the content calendar with all of your different fields or columns. And the calendar view is, of course, overall view of the calendar where once you assign a post date to the piece of content, you're going to be able to see it on the calendar view like this. And it's super easy to use. You just click and drag to reorder it. There's also a gallery preview, which I don't use much, but sometimes it's nice to see all of your previews in this view. There's also a couple others that Airtable offers. Some are paid and some are free. So for this purpose, we're going to mainly work off of the grid view. Now, as you can see, there are some color coding options available, which is really great for those visual people like myself. And you have an option to customize this even further. So let's start from left to right. On the left hand side, you've got your content topic with the sticky sort of header, I guess you would call it so that when you scroll right and left, the content topic stays intact. So first we have our content topic, which is essentially your content name. Then we've got our format. Basically you choose whether it's a reel, what kind of reel, um, carousel, single image post, etc. Next we have our platforms, which is where you can choose one or multiple. Next we've got our status. So this is really where the magic happens and how you can keep track of all of your content. So the way I've pre-filled this template is you have your idea, your script, to script, to film or create, to edit, in progress, scheduled and posted. This is of course customizable, but this is how I find that it works well for me. Then we've got our content pillars, which I just left as one, two and three, but depending on your niche, you're going to want to customize that to your own. The examples I've used for this template is for a dentist. So your content pillars could be dental care 101, teeth whitening or anything of that sort. Next, we have our purpose, which is optional, but a purpose is when you think of the marketing funnel, you've got your awareness stage, top of funnel, your consideration stage, middle of funnel, and your conversion stage, which is the bottom of the funnel. So we typically like to assign a purpose or intention to all of our content that we post. So this is something that I've included as well. Next, you've got your script again, optional, but I like to script my content or at least, you know, create talking notes. So this is where that's going to go. Next, you have a caption field, a hashtag field, a thumbnail or a preview field, which you can actually direct, uh, directly upload your files here. Your post date with your date and your time, fully customizable and approval, which is if you have a video editor or any collaborators that you work with, maybe a graphic designer, this is where you can basically provide revisions or change the status of the revision. So it starts with ready for approval, approved needs revision and not approved. Pretty simple. Next, you can add your collaborator or editor, which essentially if 
you add a collaborator to your base, you'll be able to tag them by username. And the way you do that is just hit share here and invite them by email or with a direct invite link. Next, we have our media upload. So this is optional because you can directly upload your reels and your you know content pieces here. However, on the free version, it's important to note that I believe you only get up to one gigabyte of storage. So for this reason, we use a link so this is where I would post my Google Drive link or Dropbox or whatever it is that you use. Now, this is something that I'm going to show you a little bit later, but for now, I just want to show you that it's possible. Now that you have a pretty good idea of what the content template looks like, let's go in and build our own from scratch. Now, if you're like, wow, this content calendar looks amazing, but I'm just not sure if I'm going to have the time to implement it myself. Well, my team and I can help inside the personal brand accelerator, which is our social media marketing done for you program is where we help you research script, edit and publish your content all across the major platforms. All you have to do is film, but don't worry, we even coach you on that too. So if you're interested in learning more about that, I'll leave the link to book a free 15 minute discovery call in the description below. And now let's get back to it. So if you've never used Airtable before, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna sign up and create your free account. And you can do that by going into the description of this video and clicking the link. So after you've created your account, this is kind of what your home base is gonna look like. And on the left-hand side here, you can see that you have workspaces. So you're gonna start off with one single workspace and you're gonna name it whatever it is you want. Once you have that, that's when you're gonna start a new base. And the way you create a new base is clicking this button down here. First, you're gonna select your workspace. So I'm gonna select AM and start from scratch. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna work off of the calendar template so I can easily reference it. So I've already gone ahead and created a blank base and this is what it's gonna look like. So first you're gonna to wanna to customize all of your fields. So all of these columns are called fields with an air table. And as you can see, you right now only have the grid view. So if you wanna add other views, you simply click on the plus next to the view that you want. So calendar, click plus and create new, create field and done. So now we're gonna go back to the grid view. The simplest way to rename all of these is double click it and it's gonna expand it like this. Otherwise you can click the drop down arrow as well and click edit field. We're gonna name this content topic. And it's just gonna be a single line of text. The next thing is the format. Now you can rearrange these however you like. So we're gonna go format and we're gonna select single um, select. And this is now where you're gonna add your different options. So for this, we're gonna just kind of keep it simple. You can always customize it later. You can also customize your colors, which is awesome. There you go, click save. And now when you click this drop down arrow, you're going to be able to select your format of your content. Next thing we've got is our platform. And for that, we're going to do a multi select option, keep them color coded. So Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, and so on and so forth. So when you hit save, now you're going to be able to click the plus and choose multiple options as you can see. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is create our status bar. So we actually already have that. I guess Airtable just pre-filled that automatically, but what we are going to change is we're going to customize the options. So we're going to start with idea to script, to film, to edit, scheduled and published. So you're going to find once you play around with this, what works best for you. For me, this is kind of how I like to use it. Now, when it comes to our clients, we do it slightly differently. For example, we add a awaiting content status bar so that the client knows that we are waiting for them to upload their footage for a specific piece of content. After that, we're going to create our content pillar. Content pillar is going to be another single select because there's only one pillar. For now, I'm just going to put pillar one. And this is going to all depend on your content strategy that you have in place. And don't worry about this pop up. Just go ahead and click confirm change. 
Now, the next thing will be purpose. I will just keep that as something that's optional. You can add it, you don't have to. For a start date, we're just gonna leave that because we're gonna need it and we're gonna change it to post date. And again, this can be customized however you like. I prefer the friendly one. Hit save. So next thing, when you wanna add extra fields or columns, you just scroll all the way to the right and hit add field. You actually wanna start by choosing the type of field. So for caption, it's gonna be long text, click caption. And for this purpose, I'm gonna combine it with the hashtags since they typically go into the same area. And I usually like to enable uh, rich text formatting as well. Now I'm gonna rearrange that and drag it here. The next thing we have is our thumbnail preview. So click plus, click attachment, thumbnail, and pretty self-explanatory. Next thing we have is approval. And again, this is optional. This is just gonna depend on whether you are working with this by yourself or if you have any collaborators or editors. For this, we typically have, you know, approved, needs revision, or, not approved. All right, put that there. Next, you can add your collaborator field. So you're gonna want to select user and that's it. Like I mentioned, once you add them to your base, you're gonna be able to tag them under there. Next thing we have is our media upload, which is optional. And the last thing I wanted to show you is something new that Airtable has enabled on the free version of Airtable. So just click this button up here and it's gonna basically prompt you to ask it something or you could click this and it could show you more things that it could do. Now, one thing that I started using it for, I'm still playing around with it, but that is to give me AI generated captions. So if you hit AI, we're gonna do AI text and we're gonna enable internet search. You can even choose which model of AI you want to use. So you can either choose ChatGPT, you can use Claude and some others as well. So for writing, I found Claude to be the best. For the, your custom instructions, this is essentially where you give it your custom prompt. So we have our custom prompt that we use to generate captions. So I've already gone ahead and copied my custom prompt and I'm pasting it in here. It's essentially the same as any ChatGPT prompt. You wanna be as specific as possible. You wanna provide it examples if you can. And also you wanna give it some context and data. So you wanna prompt it where to pull the information from, from these different fields or columns in order to create the caption. So one last thing I need to add is my script. So that's gonna be long text and enable rich text formatting. And let's try the AI assistant. So text, enable internet search, Claude, we're gonna paste our prompt and we're gonna select the fields that we wanted to pull from. Now, create field. Now, as you can see, it can't generate anything for you until the specific fields that you chose are filled out. So in this case, we need to give it a topic, right? So we're gonna borrow actually from this one. We're gonna copy and paste and we're gonna also copy the script. Now, when you scroll over to the AI assistant, you all you have to do is click generate. It's gonna be searching the web for a little bit, doing its magic, and it's gonna generate a caption for you. So we'll let that work for a little bit. And in the meantime, I wanna show you how to customize the fields and the view of this content calendar a little more. So right now it's a little bit squished. Imagine having like a hundred ideas in here, you know, it's gonna be a little bit hard to navigate. So one way to make it a little bit more clear and visually pleasing is with these filters up here. So first and foremost, you can click this button here, row height, and that's gonna actually expand the rows a little bit more. And this is great for when you have your thumbnails updated and you wanna see them a little bit easier or if you have a lot of text that you wanna read through. I usually like to keep it on medium. So just to show you the sorting and grouping, I'm gonna go back to the content template. Let's see what it would look like here once it's more populated. So when you hit sort 
and we go by content pillar, for example, it's going to automatically rearrange all your content pieces like this, and it's going to group the different content pillars together. Now, when you go to group, I mentioned I like to do it by status so you can see the progress of your content. This is essentially how you can see the progress and track it all within Airtable. And once you've got your content calendar populated, this is essentially what it should look like. If we go to the calendar view, this is what it looks like. By the way, you can click and expand each content piece from there. So it's just super connected and streamlined, which makes for a super easy process and workflow. All right. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to actually expand these content pieces, because this is not the only view that you have to work with. So this little arrow button, when you click that, it expands into this view. So this is where you can kind of scroll through and see your script nice and big, write your caption and everything else that you could see in the other view, but you can see it expanded. As you can see, your AI caption is now done. Okay, so it actually did a pretty good job, but that's because I gave it our prompt that we have made and obviously it's pretty good. Last thing I want to show you in this view, which is very important, is essentially how you can communicate with your collaborators or editors and how you can give them revisions. So down here in the bottom right, you could see leave a comment. So what you're going to do is write the at sign and then you invite or you click your collaborator and then you just give them a revision. When you hit send, they're actually going to get notified via email that you tag them in an Airtable comment. They're going to be able to click that link and it'll take them directly to this piece of content in this expanded view. Super useful. One last thing here, you could also see the revision history and any activity that was made, such as who edited the format, the status and etc. And there you have it, your custom content calendar in Airtable. And if this seems overwhelming at first, don't worry, just play with it, customize it and see how quickly it becomes second nature. Again, if you want to get started with the template, you can go ahead and grab it for 30 bucks. It's linked in the description. And if you're someone who needs help improving your video quality, watch this video next because I'm going to show you how to set up your camera settings and your lighting the right way so your videos can look 10 times more professional. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And remember, don't wait for freedom, create it.